It's time to start all over again. Yeah, for real. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 153 of Understanding Dark Table. I've been kicking around this idea for a little while now that there were a few reasons that supported the idea of me simply going right back to square one and starting this channel all over again. Things like the fact that my understanding of Dark Table has come a hell of a long way in the what, seven years since I started this channel. The fact that a few of the modules have had significant upgrades over that time, and there have been a few UI changes, things that have moved around, etc., etc. And so I just thought, yeah, you know what, maybe it's time to just go back to square one and start all over again. So that's what we're doing. So for those who are new, consider this the, the best place to start. As of the date of this recording, the current version is version 5.0.1, although 5.2 will drop in a couple of weeks time. As per my previous, you know, modus operandi, whenever a new version drops, I will do a video that covers the new features. So there will be a slight interruption to this reboot of the channel when 5.2 drops. So don't feel like I'm going to ignore that going forward. For everybody else, yes, we're going to cover a lot of ground that may already be familiar territory to you. But hey, who knows? You might just pick up something new along the way. You never know. So what exactly is Darktable? It is a non-destructive image editing application designed primarily for working with raw files, but you can also edit JPEGs and TIFFs and PNG files as well. But the fact that it's non-destructive means that you edit a photo and you then render that modified version out as a new image file on disk. You cannot simply open a JPEG, make some changes and then save over that original JPEG. Darktable doesn't work like that. For destructive editing like that, you go to something like Photoshop or GIMP. In terms of image file formats, Darktable supports a whole heap of file formats above and beyond the four that I've already mentioned. There's also support for high dynamic range formats like OpenEXR. When you first launch Darktable, you are going to be in the light table view. Now, there are some keyboard shortcuts for jumping between the different views, and they are L for the light table, D for the darkroom, M for map, P for the print module. And by the way, you can only print from Mac and Linux. There is no print option from Windows. S for the slideshow and T for the tethering view. Now, in any part of Darktable, you can press and hold the H key to find a list of all the keyboard shortcuts that apply in that particular view. Now, as I mentioned earlier, when you first launch Darktable, you'll be in the light table view, and it will look like this because you don't have any images imported into your database yet. On the left side, we've got the import module, along with collections, collection filters, and image information. And we will be going through each of these modules in coming videos. Over on the right-hand side, you've got a bunch of utility modules, which are useful for working with either single images or a range of images. And again, we're going to go through each of these modules in coming videos. And in the center of the UI, you've got the the main image space where once you've imported some images, those images will then appear as thumbnails in a grid. The other areas of the light table interface will also be covered in an upcoming video. But for now, I'm going to wrap it up. But before I go, I do want to mention a video, and this sort of is more for people who've been using Darktable for a while. This was a great video I came across during the week by Eric Lenz, and it was a color grading video. But what I thought was really interesting was his approach to describing what we in Darktable land would refer to as the pixel pipe and the order of processing. For those who've watched my video on scene referred versus display referred editing, 
watch Eric's video because I think you'll you'll get something from that. I think it describes what I was trying to describe in my scene referred versus display referred editing video in a slightly different way that might just make sense to you in case my video didn't make sense. Anyway, I thought it was interesting, so enjoy. The link will be in the description down below. And finally, I dug out my Pilates ball and inflated it. So now I'm sitting on a Pilates ball and it doesn't squeak and crunch like my office chair always has, which drives me nuts because when I'm editing the video, I'm always hearing these clunks and clanks from my office chair. So I think I'm going to use the Pilates ball going forward. Uh, it doesn't make any noise, just an improvement. All right, guys, hopefully this is not going to frustrate too many long-term Darktable users, but I think there's value to be had in revisiting everything from square one. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. All right, questions, comments, sing out down below, and I'll catch you in the next one.